Hello artists. So now I'm going to show you how to draw a realistic drawing. You can see already that I have a light source set up and my light is coming from this direction. Um, these objects are going to be on the side, so you're not going to be able to see them while I'm drawing, but I want to show them to you now. So first of all, I have just some objects I found at my house, like some oatmeal. When I look at this, what shapes do you see? You might have said that you see a circle from this perspective or you see a cylinder. This is also bigger than all my other objects, so this has to be the biggest thing in my picture. Then I have just a jar. What kind of shape do you think this could be drawn as? When I look at this, I actually think that I could use an oval to do this part. And then maybe a little square. And then here, I just have a little clementine. This could definitely be like a sort of flat oval when I'm drawing it. So I wanna make sure that I take my objects and set up my still life first. Think about what you want in the front, and you can see how different the shadows are based on where I place this. Or if I even overlap, it's up to you. So I'm gonna set up my still life. And then I want to start drawing. So we said step one is to break it down. Step one is two. Very good. So I'm going to start with the oatmeal, which is the biggest object. So I just used the letter I for this. I didn't start making the shape yet, but what I can start to do is to round out the top and then go straight up and down to make the shape. When you are looking at an object, when you are looking at an object from the top, it is important that you also draw the top. I'm looking at this from an angle, so that means that I can't see the whole bottom of my oatmeal, but I can see the curved line. I can see the whole top of my oatmeal though, but I can't just draw it as a perfect circle because I'm seeing at it from a different angle. So notice when I'm drawing this, this is much smaller than the oatmeal is, but I have it placed in front, so I'm showing this part overlapping. When I am finished laying out my shapes, I'm gonna start to erase some of those extra lines. Okay, so now I'm done with step one. I have laid out my shapes. This is in no way, shape, or form finished, but let's do a quick check. Did I take up most of my paper? Yeah, this is not a small thing that I am drawing. I've taken up most of the paper, and I made sure that it's in proportion because I know that this is smaller than this object, and they are both smaller than this object. I even have included some overlapping here so that there's some interest. Now, this is when you would go back and you would start to add the details. Make sure that you erase the lines that you do not want. Once I have the basic shapes laid down and I've erased all the lines that I can't see, then I want to start to add some details and I want to start thinking about shading. So this is when you would start to add any labels that you see on your artwork or any little blemishes and then you would start to add your shadows.
So this is important to note. As I started to do this, I realized my lettering was out of proportion because I actually have this slightly turned to the side. So I just went back again because I'm in pencil and I made the label a little bit bigger to the side because I have it slightly turned. Okay, so at this point, you have drawn out your objects and you have started to add little details, but you need to decide if you wanna add color or if you just wanna use your pencil. I recommend just using your pencil for today because that'll make it easy. So let's look at how I should be doing the value. The light is coming from this direction. So when I look at my objects, you can see that this side is much darker than this side is and the top is lighter than the bottom is. So this should all be left pretty much as it is on the paper and then I should start to shade as it goes down. And another thing to note is sometimes other objects cast shadows. So this is actually casting a little bit of a shadow on here and this is actually casting a little bit of a shadow on here. So, so far this technique I have been doing has been called hatching and then when you go the other direction it's called cross hatching. Remember to keep looking at your object to help you as you are drawing. Bring this up a little bit so you can see the bottom. So now I'm starting to get into the shadows and this is when I need to add some depth to my shadows. So I need to start pressing harder with my pencil and cross hatching. And you, at this point, just keep going with it. If you are drawing with just a pencil, you would keep adding to your shadows. If you are drawing with a crayon, you can do pretty much the same technique, but you would just keep adding and darkening with that crayon or that coloring object that you're doing. So make sure that you are showing your light source, make sure that your objects are in proportion, and make sure you are drawing what you see. I can't wait to see what you come up with.